Denialism. That's not a word that evokes pleasant thoughts, is it? Who wants to be considered a denialist? I use the word not to insult, but to describe a particular pattern of cognition or behavior. Science denialism is specifically what this video is about, and that's the tendency to reject well-established scientific theories, facts, laws, or evidence. Dr. Mark Hufnagel describes denialism as, quote, the employment of rhetorical tactics to give the appearance of argument or legitimate debate when in actuality there is none. It's important to point out that denialism is certainly not the same thing as skepticism. Whereas denialism refers to the refusal to accept established scientific realities, skepticism is the justified position of doubt towards propositions that are not supported by evidence and the acceptance of propositions that are. It's important to keep this distinction in mind and not conflate them. Denialism is usually unconscious, meaning people are typically not aware that they are using denialist tactics. So that begs the obvious two questions. What causes denialism? And how can we recognize the use of denialist tactics? This video will explore the question of causes and the next video will address the recognition of such tactics. If denialism is unconscious, it's because something else is intruding on people's ability to digest the relevant scientific evidence that they're dismissing or ignoring. Denialism is often used as a self-defense mechanism to protect one's core values from being undermined. It's important to humbly acknowledge that we've all been guilty of using such tactics at one point or another, some more than others, no doubt. Inevitably, we all face conflict with facts because none of us have perfect internal models of reality. One of the causes proposed in social psychology is motivated reasoning, whether stemming from religious beliefs, political ideologies, or economic leanings. Of course, denialism usually goes along with insufficient education on scientific issues, a lack of science literacy, skepticism, and logic, and a general lack of awareness about the cognitive biases that often underpin this denial. A common finding in the psychological sciences is that we tend to arrive at our beliefs first and then backpedal to find evidence to support them. This often leads to motivated reasoning, which is the tendency toward emotion-based reasoning that is divorced from evidence and reason. Once we settle on a view, we often selectively gather evidence that supports our view and disregard evidence that doesn't in order to prevent cognitive dissonance. A review of the literature in a recent meta-analysis examined the behavior we engage in surrounding feeling validated versus being correct and reaffirmed this tendency, finding that the stronger the view, the greater the tendency to select sources in a biased manner. Unless the information was very low quality, then people don't mind reading contrary views since they can easily refute them. In quantitative terms, people were almost twice as likely to select sources that agreed with their view than disagreed. Politics is a domain in which this occurs a lot, both on the right and the left ends of the traditional political spectrum. Religious belief is also a significant contributor to motivated reasoning. Science denialism is thus common when scientific evidence is out of step with our predetermined political or religious leanings. For example, in the US, Republicans are much more likely to reject the wide scientific consensuses on the theory of evolution and human-caused climate change, though there is considerable denial among Democrats as well, especially about evolution where the gap is less. For evolution, however, religious rather than political identification is a greater predictor of the acceptance of evolution, and the religiously unaffiliated are more likely to lean left politically. Several studies have confirmed that the endorsement of free market ideologies was a high predictor of climate science denial in particular. Rejecting the science behind the safety and efficacy of vaccines, as well as the acceptance of the safety of genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, is more split. Several studies have determined that acceptance of the science here is more nuanced and not predicted well by political leanings but better predicted by the tendency to endorse conspiracy theories. More on this contentious topic in the next video series.
Other studies have corroborated the claims that similar percentages of people across the political spectrum deny the science behind vaccines and GMOs. However, more people on the far left, a proportionally small group, tend to deny GMO safety than do people on the far right. To further demonstrate this motivated reasoning, consider this study that pitched two fake newspaper headlines to citizens of different values to see their responses. One headline was, Scientific Panel Recommends Anti-Pollution Solution to Global Warming. And the other, Scientific Panel Recommends Nuclear Solution to Global Warming. The results are quite telling, that those with hierarchical and individualistic tendencies, values of the political right, were more willing to accept the facts surrounding man-made climate change if the solution proposed for it was a market-based solution rather than a government one. This is helpful in determining ways to combat science denial, that we ought to strive to appeal to people's defining values in discussing information that may provoke a defensive or dismissive response. Overall, liberals tend to trust science more, whereas the last several decades has seen trust in science decline among political conservatives and those who frequently attend church. So it seems that political liberalism is not as highly correlated overall to science denial as political conservatism is. But certain fields of science provoke denialism fairly uniformly across the political spectrum. And the extremes of both ends correlate with much higher forms of denial. While denial in certain scientific fields is more easily predicted by other factors, such as specific religious beliefs, which contradict science, and the tendency towards believing conspiracy theories. Motivated reasoning often paves the way for a whole host of cognitive biases, errors in judgment about people or situations. For example, a classic 1999 study established what is now known as the Dunning-Kruger effect, corroborated in many studies since. It's the tendency for unskilled individuals to be unaware of their lack of skill and thus overestimate their abilities. It likewise often compels the incompetent into having inflated confidence about their abilities, while more skilled individuals tend to underestimate their abilities. No one is immune from this, but it's clear that the gap between self-assessment and skill is highest amongst those with the lowest ability. This is often related to inequality bias, where we tend to ignore differences in people's skill and seek to find some form of middle ground between different viewpoints expressed. We ignore or don't recognize experts and project a false sense of legitimacy amongst different views. This is of course problematic in the domain of science where we must inevitably defer to expert consensus. As discussed in the previous video trilogy on scientific consensus, it is an extremely important benchmark because it represents the collective wisdom of experts in a field. And at some point, as non-experts, our knowledge will be deficient and will have to rely on expertise. These are just some of the cognitive traps we often fall victim to that provoke science denialism. In many ways, these biases are the base state for humans. We're emotional creatures by default, and scientific skepticism is something we must learn to help overcome this. How do we do this? The first step is to recognize these biases in effect. In relation to science denialism, there are many common patterns and attributes to look for in detecting it. Join me in the next video to explore the features of science denialism and how to recognize them.